The Get On Living Saintly campaign is sponsoring this podcast to remind you to keep your spending in the community. Supporting local businesses keeps food on the table for our friends and neighbors. Follow them on social media and learn more at GetOnLivingSafely.com. Maureen Turner is a photographer and graphic artist. We explore her process when creating, how her themes of humor, social issues, and day-to-day -day insecurities are incorporated into the work. She also touches on creating a collaborative, creative space. You can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. So my name is Maureen Ashley Turner. I was born in Laredo, Texas. I got into art. Both my parents are artists, and they always encouraged us, like their kids, to express ourselves, you know, have fun, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say they were probably my biggest influence on why I started at a young age. Can you give us some insight in the process when creating works with your camera? You know, some of it's uh, realistic and then you kind of use it in some format to sort of layer over it. What is the process when working with photography? Yeah, for sure. Um, so like you said, I do photography and then I also do digital art. I take a lot of still photos sometimes take pictures of random things that I might feel inspired about later. And then I bring them into Photoshop and I do things called photo manipulations where I layer and stack other photos that I've taken or um, different types of tools that you can get on Photoshop and create something that I feel is representative for how I'm feeling in that moment, or it might be based on a song or it might be based on some type of psychological thing that I read about in a book. Most of it. Yeah. It's like, 30 layer process in Photoshop. I do a bunch of different things where I'm, I might double exposure the photo, add like triple exposure, quadruple exposure, Photoshop something else in on top of that. Basically, it's like fancy digital collage work, though. That's like how I can break it down the easiest way. Nice. But um, as far as like my process on how I do that. Yeah, I just I have fun. I go with what's inspiring me in that moment and put some good music on and I just crank it out. So with your photography that you use, do you always use your own photography or do you borrow and kind of, like you said, collage? Or is it always bits and pieces from your own work? It's kind of a combination of both. It really depends on what I'm doing. I also uh, have like one of those drawing pads. I'm not really good with technical terms. So some stuff I do like manually draw into that stuff. But most of it is my, my photos that I've taken of the things but I do occasionally, if I don't get the, the exact thing that I like, I might utilize a stock photo or create my own PNG and draw that out myself using a reference photo. But I try to keep at least 80% of the work in my work mine. Also, this work seems to cover a vast number of themes, you know, some of it even comedic to serious social issues, just day-to-day -day insecurities and anxiety. What is your, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what is your process when coming up with these concepts? Do, do they run in a series or do they, do they change day by day or do you have a plan? Usually I go by how I'm feeling and I try to articulate emotions into art and using symbols that I associate those emotions with. Like for me, I use a lot of roses. Roses for me symbolize like passion and intense love. For most people, that might be the same thing. But um, lately, the last five pictures that I've done have been more about maybe something that everyone can relate to with how COVID is making people feel like a little isolated, a little sad, maybe having some like really good existential thoughts. And in those recent pieces, I utilized a lot of like infinity mirror type things in art where there's like repeating lights in my pictures and kind of like is this going to go on forever? Is this isolated feeling going to, is this the new norm? So I have those pictures kind of symbolizing a lot and then being about, you know, that, but then also having happy tones to them because I don't know, I'm kind of introverted. I'm enjoying myself still, but it's like this new world is a little weird. I don't know how I feel. It's supposed to feel complex. It's supposed to be confusing, maybe mixed motions. The ones I've done lately have been about songs that I've listened to that kind of also line up with those feelings that I've been having and correlating that into art. But um, 
usually I try to go with things that I think people can relate to and people who are empathetic creatures. So however I'm feeling, somebody might relate to that. Or maybe somebody is not so confident or, you know, emotionally vulnerable to put that out there. I want to make people feel comforted and, you know, if they read it, they see my art, maybe they'll relate to that and be like, oh, hey, I was feeling like that, but maybe I didn't feel, you know, as confident or comfortable expressing that to people, but this person's feeling that, so maybe I feel a little bit more normal now. So a lot of my, like, more thought out pieces kind of have those underlying themes to them, and I'll touch on a bunch of different things from, like, body dysmorphia to, like, positivity, toxic positivity, I did a, a series on the deadly sins. That one was a lot of fun. Or just like comfort and connecting, you know, passion, those types of things. So I like doing the psychological type stuff and seeing if anybody catches on it. So in terms of COVID, how has your output been with it? I've, you know, I've talked to musicians and various other artists and people have found this time to be a, either a complete just panic attack, but also an opportunity for creativity and People have written more songs. Has it affected your output or has it been not so much, uh, I guess, an inspiration in some capacity? Yeah. No, I would say it's affected me in different ways. I was doing mostly just straight photography for a little bit. And that's been kind of, you know, first COVID hits, you're not supposed to hang out with anybody. I'm not supposed to really go outside. You're supposed to stay inside. So photography got kind of put on the back burner. So then I was like, well, this is a great time for me to learn more about graphic art and, you know, exercise that other aspect of art that I really love. Started painting more too, but for the first month or so, I probably didn't create anything to be completely honest because the world was just flipped upside down. I was trying to figure out what my new schedule is going to look like as far as like what I could do and also trying to like process my own emotions and channel that into creativity. It took me about a month to transition into the new norm and then I started putting out a lot more stuff and feeling more inspired and you know this is going to be around for a while so might as well get used to it was kind of my thought process yeah I think everyone took that path a little bit of time just to be like what is happening and then you just have to continue so what's next for you I know we're going to talk about a, a new art space that's coming but what are you excited about that you're working on that's coming up Besides the art space, I'm doing a series uh, called Artist of Lacrosse, and it got put on halt for a little bit because COVID, but um, that's starting to kick back up for me now because I can meet one-on-one -on -one with people outside and have coffee with them and learn about them, kind of like this. But basically what that project for me consists of is taking a picture of the artist and then doing a double exposure of their art in their picture. So it's like you see them, but you also see their art through them. And it's a really big project. I have a ton of people on board for it, but that's probably the big thing that I'm looking forward to is getting back to that. And then um, I also got accepted into my master's program. So using that new knowledge and using that to fuel new art, because I really want to make more art about mental health and coping and technique and about therapy. And I want to make that into art and make it like transmutable for people and connecting. Yeah, it looks like that project has a lot of sort of collaborative components to it, meeting with the artists and then actually creating work from it. So that could kind of lead us directly into this new art space that you've been working on for the past couple of months. What's that about? Yeah, so uh, me and a couple other people, we're opening up a space called The Eclective. And that's going to be in the old shoe factory, kind of by Pearl Street Brewery. And um, the space is going to be really unique because it's going to be a collection of eclectic artists. <laughs> We're all different styles, ranging from photography to oil pastel, just to oil, to acrylics, to, to cartoons, to graphic artists, to printmaking. Like, we're just a big group of random and variable artists. And um, it's supposed to be a space that's going to promote mostly local art and local artists, maybe artists that people don't know about. That's been a great thing about the project that I'm working on is because I'm learning about all these new artists and having uh, group shows in the future and having maybe those artists have their stuff in there and be able to connect with the community and the community learn about its own community because I don't think people realize how many local artists there are even here. I didn't even know. I've lived here for gosh seven years now and I've 
now know over 50 local artists. And at first I thought maybe there's only 10 of us here because that's the only 10 that I was friends with. But yeah, hoping that the space can facilitate some really cool collaborations in the future and some great fundraising and projects ahead. So if people want to find out more about your work, what's the best uh, avenue for them to check out your stuff and to maybe follow along on your process? So I have two Instagrams. <laughs> One's my more like graphic art and random art that I do, like painting, modeling, graphic design, visual arts, collaborative pieces. That one's on Maureen Ashley Turner. But then as far as just like still life photography and portrait art, that one's under my photography account. And that's Maureen Ashley Photography. But I also have a website, www.maureenashleyphotography.com. And that website has all of my visual graphic art on there, along with like photography arts too. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you would like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Locals. Subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We thank you for it. <laughs>